Okay, so now let's get on to the intermediate value theorem and something that again brings up to our notion of continuity with polynomials. And basically, you know, the intermediate value theorem is based on you having a polynomial that uh, obviously a polynomial is continuous on an interval. And obviously we saw in the last example that we could have, you know, some intervals where, you know, it doesn't make sense. But if we're talking about an interval, for instance, like the price increases, it's going to be in continuous. And just like our warm up in the example, you know, the, the speed that you're traveling in a car is, you know, continuous or you're dropping out of airplane, like your travel, your path is going to be, you know, your height is going to be a continuous function. So as long as we have a continuous function between an interval, um, then there is going to always exist a value between those um, two endpoints of that interval as long as your polynomial is, um, as long as not just a polynomial, but as long as your function is continuous. And this is for functions, not just for polynomials. But we're really diving in on con continuity with polynomials, so that's why I'm bringing it up in this uh, section. So where it's really going to be helpful for us is determining, you know, if a zero exists for a polynomial. So here's kind of like your general definition for the intermediate value theorem for any kind of function on any interval. We're going to use the intermediate value theorem to basically determine, you know, where zeros or if a zero exists. So um, if we have an interval, you know, from A to B, um, and f of A and f of B have opposite signs, then there must exist a value C where f of c is equal to zero, basically meaning where there's going to be a zero. So we can graphically kind of like look at this and let's just say, you know, here's a and here's b. So there's our inner, that's b. So here's our interval. And what they're basically saying is if f of a is like some negative value, let's just say it's, uh, you know, I don't know, negative four. I hate my fours, I should not have picked four. And let's say b, f of b ends up being like, um, positive 4. Let's just say that, positive 4. Well, as long as this is a continuous function, we don't know how many value, how many times it's going to cross. I mean, it could look like anything. But the only thing that we do know is that for us to go from a negative value to a positive value of a continuous function, it has to cross the exact value at a value of c. And obviously, the x-intercept we've talked about is a real zero. So that's what the intermediate value theorem um, basically gives us. It doesn't it doesn't tell us where the value of c is, but just tells us that c has to exist. So um, in our example is using the intermediate value theorem to show that a polynomial f of x, da, 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 x cubed minus 2x minus 5 has a real zero between the interval 2 and 3. Then use graphing technology to confirm. So we'll go and take a look at the graph here in a second. But the main important thing is we want to see if a zero is going to exist. That means for a and b, which would be like 2 and 3, our endpoints, we have to have um, opposite values. So what we're going to do here is let's go ahead and evaluate for f of 2. So evaluate for f of 2. So by plugging in 2 here, I get 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 minus 5. 2 cubed is going to be 8 minus 4 minus 5. 8 minus 4 is 4. 4 minus 5 is going to be a negative 1. So f of 2 equals negative 1. And now let's go and check out uh, f of 3. So if I do f of 3, that's basically going to be 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 minus 5. So 3 cubed is going to be 27. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 minus 5. So therefore, that's going to be uh, 27 minus 6 is going to be 21. Minus 5 is going to be a positive 16. So if we were to kind of look at this in a graphical approach, now we don't know what this graph looks like, right? But we just know that between 2 and 3, let's just say 2 and 3 right here, at 2, we're dealing with a value that's at negative 1. And at 3, we're dealing with a value, let's just put it like way up here, that's at 16, right? So for us to go from 2 to 3, since this function is a continuous, and let's look at this, like f of x, we can say that is a continuous function. There's no discontinuities, right? That we talked about discontinuities of functions. There's no holes. There's no asymptotes. There's no, um, you know, radicals or anything that'd be a discontinuity. So therefore, we don't know what this graph is going to look like, but we know that it's going to be continuous, and there has to be this value c that it's going to cross. So let's go ahead and look at the graphical approach it. Maybe I can't. Let's go and take a look at the graphical approach and, and maybe find the value C. 
So if I go and graph it, which I did, so you can see here between two and then obviously three, this function is continuous. And then let's see where that value is. Make sure that's between two and three and where it crosses as at 2.095. And that's exactly between the interval two and three. So that value C, C is equal to 2.095. We can see that it exists um, by using the graphical approach. But that's basically what the, um, all the intermediate value theorem is going to be telling us. Stop, oh, wrong one. That's basically what the intermediate value theorem is, is just telling us that the zero is going to exist. And again, we have to have our conditions is it has to be on a, you know, on a closed interval and also that the fact that we are going to have um, a function that is going to be continuous. And in this section, we're dealing with a function that is a polynomial. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end for the graphs of polynomials.